Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne here. Today I'm talking about INTP emotions. And now I know INTPs are not supposed to have any emotions. You're supposed to be Mr. Data, walking around making rational, analytical decisions based on very, very smart, intelligent thinking, you know. You're supposed to be a head, not a heart. You're supposed to be smart. You're not supposed to be emotional. But emotions are an integral part of the INTP. And if you want to understand an INTP, you have to understand their emotions. And there are a few emotions that I feel are particularly INTP, in a sense that INTPs feel these emotions more than any other type. Now, some of these emotions come from introverted thinking. You know, introverted thinking is that ability that it can represent that emotion that makes you feel that you feel when everything is perfect, you know, everything is just the way you want it. Everything is just in the right place, you know, you figured it all out, you got it. It's that emotion when you figured something out and when you understand something and when you got the right answer, you know you've had the right answer. And yeah, other people might think you're arrogant, but it's the right answer. You know it, you're sure of it, you know. That's an emotion, that's a feeling. That's not just the something INTPs do, it's not just a reflex, it's a feeling that fills you up your whole body. It gives you this sense of motivation or pride or this sense of satisfaction of uh, having or knowing the right answer. And it's uh, contrasted perhaps good by not knowing. Ignorance is uh, something INTPs hate and struggle with. You know, that emotion of knowing you're wrong and knowing you don't have the right answer. That's very difficult for an INTP, you know. INTPs are some of the most perfectionistic and they get very annoyed when they don't know the right answer, when they're not getting something right. They can get very frustrated by this, you know. Why don't I get it? Why don't I understand it? Why can't I get it right, you know. They can get annoyed when they're getting errors that they are not supposed to, when they're noticing issues and problems that should not come up. And those things uh, can truly hit that an INTP emotionally. It's not just a random experience it's not just a logical program it's uh, an emotion that fills up your body when you're not right and you get frustrated by not getting the right answer that's an emotion another emotion you can find in uh, the INTP comes from introverted intuition you know introverted intuition can fill you up with a sense of distance and detachment from things you don't get caught up like everyone else does you don't get overwhelmed or uh, over-engaged by the situation. You don't get, uh, you don't lose your head in a stressful or overwhelming situation. You stay calm, you stay detached, you stay distanced. Yeah, I know this is, this might appear like the absence of an emotion, but it has a feeling. Detachment has a feeling. And the feeling of detachment is like when you feel isolated and lonely. It's that feeling of cool, calm, lucidity. It's reducing the world to numbers and data and theory and abstraction and removing yourself from the stress and the physicality of a situation. It's that pure sensation of calm and lucidity and understanding or a will to understand. It's also the amusement, you know, amusement with the absurdity of something or the ability to see the st stupidity or ignorance of something. And it's that uh, frustration with ignorance. It's that annoyance with uh, stupidity and with uh, a general lack of understanding, you know, when people don't get it, when people are shallow and people are superficial and people don't see the truth that you know is there. That's something that INTPs can respond to very emotionally. Another part that I think is very INTP is that rebellion that comes from being an intuitive perceiving type, you know. It's that sensation of joy or excitement when you're doing something you know you're not supposed to do or when you're engaged in something you know you've been told not to do. It's when you're trying something new and you know other people 
have told you to do something else, but you're doing it anyways because you like to and because it sounds fun and because it sounds interesting and you really are curious to find out what will happen. INTPs can truly feel filled up with that emotion when, that, you all, that we all feel when we're doing something we know we're not supposed to or when we're doing something unconventional or when we're trying something new or when we're questioning the norms of society or when we're going against the flow or uh, when we're marching to the beat of our own drum. That emotion, I feel, is very INTP. As well as that emotion when you're forced to sit down and when you're forced to conform and when you're forced to follow the rules and when people are trying to get you to go along with the laws of society and you feel that hitting against you, you know, when you feel the world hitting against you with its rules and with its laws and when the law is on you and monitoring you and watching you and observing you and trying constantly to get you to conform when there are too many rules for how you have to do everything and when there is no ability to improvise or try new things or experiment that emotion of uh, when just the world is trying to lock you in and you have to find a way out can feel a little bit like feeling trapped, you know, I think INTPs feel trapped quite a lot uh, when they feel there is no way out or no way forward or they don't know how to get away from a situation. That feeling of being trapped I feel is very INTP. Another very important emotion to speak of I think comes from thinking and perceiving. Thinking and perceiving uh, can hit you emotionally because it can represent that pride you feel when you know you're the best you know i think a lot of intps are seeking competitively to be the best the smartest person in the room to know to know that you can do something better than everyone else to know that you have an ability everyone else cannot compete with to know you're really good at something to know you are able to solve problems other people can't, to know that you're able to counter other people, that to know you're able to barter and argue and win in discussion, to know you're able to stay ahead. That emotion I think is very INTP, feeling that you are the best, knowing that you are the best, competing with others and winning and seeing that you can win, and feeling proud because you are and you know and you trust in your own ability to do something that nobody else can. Another more negative INTP emotion, that is that of envy, you know. To know other people are better than you at something. To know other people are smarter than you. To know that you are not as good as everyone else. To know that other people are ahead of you. To know other people are looking down on you. To know that other people think they can do something more, better, faster than you can. And to feel that, you know other people are starting to hit your results or that other people are starting to get ahead and that other people are starting to win at something that is very important to you, a skill that you value. Now, you might not think of INTPs as competitive types because INTPs are rarely going to hit their skills in your face. They're never going to be up uh, in your face about something they can do. But... They are, and they do value competition from a distance. They do value knowing that they're better than you, knowing that they is, they're smarter, knowing that they're ahead, knowing that they are, and have a skill that other people cannot compete with. And all of these things, they represent the INTP's emotional aspects, you know. You have cognitive aspects and you have an emotional aspect of yourself. Everyone has an emotional side and an, a rational side and more mental or cognitive side of themselves. You know, the cognitive aspect is just the pure action, the thing you do, the logical process behind something, how you do something, how you solve a problem, how you work through something in your mind. You know, it's the maths, it's the algorithms, it's the strategies you follow, it's the tactics you choose to pursue, it is the strategies you employ, and it's the uh, different actions you take in a situation or the arguments you could use to do something. So, the cognitive side can be felt the most strongly when you engage 
the world more theoretically. You know, you can see the world from the perspective of your mind. And you can see things based on how do I do something? How do I think about something? How do I deal with something? And you can choose to keep your emotions separate from your judgment. And a lot of people do this. A lot of people practice, you know, keeping your rational side up front and holding your emotional side back from a situation or a discussion or something. You know, you can, there's a difference between speaking out of emotion and letting your emotions dominate the situation. And it is choosing to respond rationally to a situation. And you think once again, maybe INTPs are just the people that pursue things rationally and just keep their emotions back. But that might not be true. Sometimes the INTP loses their cool. Sometimes their emotions come up in the front and push their intellect and their rational sides back. Sometimes INTPs let their arrogance get the better of them and they become cocky and they think they're better than other people, but really they are not. They don't notice that other people are starting to get ahead or they overestimate their own abilities at something and slowly they don't understand, they struggle to understand why other people are doing better. How come if I'm so good at something and if I'm doing everything right, other people are doing better than me or seem happier than me or seem to be doing things, uh, getting more results than I do? And it can feel, uh, that can hit at your envy, you know, the envy that can really take over. It can be like... They are getting ahead, but they don't deserve to because I'm the good one. I'm the smart one. I'm the one that's doing everything right. I'm the one with the skills. And that can uh, be when the emotions start getting the better of you. Or it can be when uh, you're dealing with a situation and uh, the frustration of being wrong starts really eating you up. You know, you're trying to do something. You're trying to get the right answer, but you keep getting it wrong and the frustration starts to amp up. And it becomes like, oh, I'll never get it right. I'll never be able to figure this out. You know, it's that frustration when that slowly amps up. You know, frustration is not like angry. You know, angry people or the emotion of anger, it's an explosive emotion. Frustration is more like a biting, pinching emotion. It's that pinching feeling that no, no, it's not right. It's still not right. It's still not right. That can slowly, you know, uh, eat you up a little bit. Uh, and eat at your confidence at something and it can become a self-fulfilling pro uh, prophecy as you feel as your introverted thinking keeps telling you you're not doing it right and as you keep feeling because I'm not doing it right I'm not doing it right and that's the self-fulfilling prophecy you start performing gradually worse at something the more you try at it because the frustration starts taking over and starts becoming more difficult and the analytical ability to solve the problem cannot keep up. And uh, this is why I began to talk about assertiveness and turbulence. You know, assertiveness represents a person's ability to keep negative emotions and uh, to keep one's emotional side at bay and to respond to one's emotional issues. Everyone has emotions that eat at them. Everyone has struggles. Everyone... Uh, is in the grip of their feelings and their feelings can take over in times where we start feeling that our rational side cannot deal with a problem. The more we start feeling like our, our rational side cannot deal with a problem, the more our emotions get the better of us. And yeah, emotions can aid our judgment or it can kill it. <laughs> it can aid our judgment and it can remind us of what we want. It can remind us that we want and genuinely seek to become better at something. It can remind us that we really do want to get the right answer. It can remind us that we really do want to get better at something and to improve at something. And that we really want to understand something and gain more information about something. It can be what helps us uh, truly remain open-minded and to truly entertain all opportunities. It can remind us that we want and need to be and stay open-minded. But uh, turbulence can also shake us up, literally. Turbulence can be that uh, thing that grabs your wings and causes your whole uh, pilot, your whole body to shake. You know, It can keep you from doing, dealing with the situation. It can make the situation more difficult to deal with. And what I've always come to learn is uh, 
emotions have to be directed properly in the right situations, in the right manner, in the right quantity. And we have to constantly find ways to help the outlets for our emotions. And that means, you know, a healthy competition, you know, with people that are fair to compete with, competing with people of a similar skill level and similar uh, amount of experience in something, competing with the people that show similar intellect or a similar ability. It can mean uh, being able to uh, deal with arrogance by challenging yourself and uh, putting challenges on your table that you know are currently above your level and recognizing that that higher level exists and will always exist you know there there will always be a tree you cannot cut down there will always be a puzzle or a riddle that is uh, uh, smarter than what you are at the moment it can be a health and healthy outlet for an emotion can be you know when you're able to recognize a problem in the world that you don't get or cannot resolve or cannot understand or comprehend a system that is bigger than your current level of understanding or awareness a problem in the world that is more overwhelming or more challenging than what your mental models or logical systems can answer or deal with it's recognizing that there are things out there answers puzzles riddles that you have yet to understand and it can be, you know, being able to rejoice and make peace with that and to not get stressed by it. You know, emotions, they can stress us out to the point where we lose our ability to keep moving forward. We can pull up our emotions in the front of our face and collide with our own emotions and crash. And we can find ourselves completely numb or stuck or unable to progress because we have made an emotion bigger because we have amplified it, because we have made a situation more difficult than what we can resolve. And uh, what we have to work with constantly is setting a skill level. You know, level one, level two, level three, where am I now? Constantly set skill levels for yourself, appropriate challenges, obstacles that are a little beyond your level, but not too far. Without emotions, often it is the we are often given a feeling that life has no point. You know, a world without emotions and without challenges and without uh, things that hit us emotionally and that mean something to us will feel meaningless and uh, grim. It will feel dark, unnecessary, tedious. You know, the less you're able to appropriately challenge yourself and remind you of bigger and more important things in the world where it's things worth fighting for, the more you'll fall the grip in the grip of autopilot. And the autopilot represents your ability towards self-control. You know, I told you there was a side of you that was purely mental and there was a side of you that was purely emotional. The auxiliary function in the MTI often represents something that is purely emotional. The tertiary function, however, represents something that is purely mental to you. The tertiary function means absolutely nothing to you. But you're good at it and it gives you a feeling of control and strength. You know, the mental world where everything is purely a mental exercise, everything is a question of analysis, data, problem solving. That world means absolutely nothing to you, but it still becomes and can be a big part of your life. And when it becomes too big... The world loses its literal meaning, you know, there is no level of growth, there is nothing higher worth striving for, there is nothing that feels genuinely meaningful, everything just feels, uh, nothing feels at all, things just are. And that feeling I told you can be, can give a sensation of control, and control is uh, often the opposite of emotion, it's, there, it has no emotionality. It gives assertiveness, it gives a confidence, it gives a sense of self. It's like a mental reminder, it's like a pop-up notification, a push notification. Do this, go through that, deal with this, take care of that. It's purely a message that has no emotional form, no value, no meaning. So it's like playing the world with cheat codes, it's playing... The world on level one when you're at level 50 it's 
doing something that takes zero effort. It's uh, in that way a pure sensation of relief. The mental world gives relief. The emotional world gives challenge and meaning. And this whole debate that brings a question to know, you know, the whole the semantics of thinking and feeling. And, you know, people are so caught up in the semantics, you know. They say thinkers are like that and feelers are like that. And they're just trying to define the semantics of the terms. What does thinking mean? What does feeling mean, you know. And in this whole debate, everyone has misunderstood everything. It's not about thoughts or emotions. Thinking and feeling is about something else. Thinking is about logic, reason, skills, achievements, ambitions, projects. It's about practice. It's about uh, intellect, critical thinking, development, strategy, tactics, technology. And feeling, what is that then? Feeling has nothing to do with emotion at all. Like I told you, the INTP can be just as emotional as the thinker. Sorry. The thinker can be just as emotional as the feeler. Feeling, that has to do with social aspects, relationships, people, groups, introspection, self-awareness. It has to do with art, music, self-expression, you know, poetry, you know, literature, you know, what you feel, who are you, what do you mean, what is an individual, what does it mean to be a person? <laughs> and when you think about that, it gets quite ridiculous. What have we all been doing? We've been talking about semantics, but we haven't been talking about context. We've been talking about INTPs, but we haven't been talking about the INTP's feelings. We have not been talking about the INTP's levels of development. We have not been talking about what happiness is to an INTP. We have not been talking about psychology. We have been caught up with typology. And if typology is ever to become a psychology, typology must address the issues of happiness and growth and of psychological struggles of anxiety and of all those problems that we all deal with every day that go beyond pure personality typology that go beyond pure definitions and semantics and transcend and answer fundamental psychological questions of human nature Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you liked the video and I hope this made sense to you as INTPs. Let me know in the comments down below what emotions are the biggest to you as an INTP. Which of these do you relate to the most? What do these emotions uh, remind you of in your past? Situations you've been in or situations where you let emotions take over? Situations where you felt a bit depressed or situations where you didn't listen to yourself or your own feelings? Think about situations uh, and think about yourself as an INTP and what INTPs do. You know, I always said INTPs and thinkers in general, their plan, their core project is to be able to develop smart, rational strategies to deal with emotions, you know, to set skill levels, to, uh, games, to have competition, to do things that will engage their emotions on a more rational level. But I've never felt truly that INTPs were less emotional than any other personality type. And I've never seen that in any real examples of INTPs. So that's some stereotype busting for you all. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.